<laughs> eight classes of it is what eight length classes. per class? Uh, about four hours a piece. So, okay, yeah, that's yeah. good. We do not offer that anymore. I thought that was a one. No. Susan, I have another question uh -huh. for you. So, <clears throat> I'm sure with the different communities that you're dealing with, uh, I, I would assume you get asked this question where's the best place to buy one? <laughs> I don't have a best place, really. Um, the reason Political is, is because we don't buy, right. we buy in bulk and we buy on government contracts and we buy probably six or eight of these smaller units for our administration vehicles and then the fire trucks and the rescue units have the big zoles. So they, have, they have the big units that kind of look like they could charge a car battery. Um, so we don't purchase them. I don't know. Right. The only thing that I can tell you is reach out to your surrounding communities and ask them because yeah. they will tell you and you might be catching them at a time where they're going to buy and you can go in and buy in bulk. You can buy purchases of you know four, five, six of them at a time and maybe yeah. get a better price. I got a couple of quotes and, and the two companies are within a few dollars of each other. Yeah. <laughs> I suspect that's probably accurate. You said for the CERT training that was eight four hour classes, you no longer do we that? We do one? not do that anymore. So then the certification training class you do give is? CPR and AED. For how long? Um, that class is about four hours. One class, four hours? <laughs> Oh, that, that's what I was getting. Yeah, that's okay. right. And that's $45. Yeah. That's 45 Yes, because that is the one that we have to run through American Heart. Yeah. They charge us they get their for the taste. cost. They get their taste. And they charge us for the cards, the certification cards that you get, and all of that. To recertify, is you have to go through another four hour class? Yes, because the class that we would teach you guys is called Heart Saver, CPR AED. It would cover CPR and AED for adult children and infants. So it's a pretty intense class. That's why it takes about four hours. Um, once you get done with that class, you need to recertify in two, two years. years. And the reason for that, they don't have what they call a renewal class. Renewal class um, is just would be something that we would just go and kind of refresh. The reason you have to take the whole thing over again is that heart saver class is geared for lay people people that do not do what I do for a living. So your opportunities to perform CPR and AED are probably minimal. It's not something you're gonna come across every week in your job. That's why you have to take the whole class over again because it's <coughs> under the understanding that you haven't had or have had minimal exposure to this. Mm -hmm. uh, taking that class, if I remember right, you don't have to run a tape to complete it. We stepped about a two-minute tape. Oh no! That just what? That's long gone. Good. Long yeah. gone. I used to mm -hmm. sell those to doctors. Yeah, no. <laughs> you just gotta listen to me that for four hours. Bill, the bucket brigade stopped. All <laughs> right. Just remember, if you go down, I, I could get <laughs> <hit> to <it laughs> <to> death. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions, Susan? We'll no. be. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very yeah. informative. Did we, did we ask all the questions? That's the, that's the last question. Did we ask all the questions? Was there anything we should have asked you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you guys did pretty good. Okay. I think you did pretty good. Um, I know they're I know they're a big expense, so I want you to you know do whatever is best for the community and make sure that you guys make the best decision. So you know anything that I can do to help, um, just saving a life is worth it. Yeah. If you know, like I, I tell my people all the time, I hope it's a training that I give you that you never need. I hope it's just at four hours that we've spent and we've had great fellowship and we've laughed. Um, Bill will tell you I'm kind of a uh, quirky little instructor, so we have a lot of fun and we laugh and we have a great time, but we learn a lot and we get busy doing the job. Um, and I hope that's all it is. And I hope I see you in two years and we do it all over again. So if we have training, do we go to you or do you come to us? We can come to you. We can do it right, right here. In this room. We, that's what we did last time. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. yeah. Thank you. Good Thank you. That means you provide the donuts. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's, he's a cop. So. <laughs> <laughs> you, <but> she said, <laughs> well, okay. I don't have to take that big <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Bruce Shaw. Go to Publix. Five guys go into Bruce Shaw. But they're fair and service. You know, it's okay to be jealous. Three minutes. Hey, Susan, you do know that. Dunkin' Donuts now has a dark blue powdered sugar, so it doesn't mess up the I uniform. I know, because it won't get on their uniform. <laughs> 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 they came up to my class. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. If you have any questions, just give me a call. Let me know. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll get into uh, the resident forum. Lloyd, you're number one tonight. I'm always number one. Well, that's true, but <laughs> at least in your mind. It's <laughs> <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> um, Lloyd Sebi, I live on Braxfield, uh, and I've been here since 2002. And uh, I just want to bring up that, uh, and I stop into the office, even though I'm not on the board anymore, I stop in here every once in a while see what's going on. And I see a group of people that's working on some activities around here. And in my time here, I've never seen so many activities that are offered for our children and adults and everything else. So I would like to commend these people and, uh, and read off the names of who's been involved in this. And uh, we got Stephanie Crockett, Elizabeth Hansen, Nancy Austin, and Jewel Farber. These people work tirelessly to get these activities going, mainly for the children, but they were also involved in the uh, Stony Brook days, which I think was a, a big uh, success. And our own staff, Tammy, Nicole, and Alex, they were out there helping make sure this turned out to be good. And uh, last but not least, Debbie Lane comes in and she has a long list of adult activities going through the end of this year and on in the next year. And I think these people need to be recognized for all they do because, uh, you know, they're in here working, getting things organized. When I come in here, they're either getting things organized for the the, the present um, uh, activity or they're planning for the next one and uh, I think they really do a great job in this community are, uh, needs to recognize all of them so uh, I just want to bring that up thanks a lot thank, thank you Lloyd. thank you, thank you. Three, 100 percent yes <laughs> Scott you're number two <laughs> Scott Rourke from uh, Bellhaven Way. It's been here since uh, April um, in the community. I just have some questions because if I don't write them down and ask them, I will forget them. Um, so I don't know if these are going to be for the HOA or the CDD, but I'm just going to ask. Um, the distance from the fence that's on Bellhaven Way to the preserve, um, I understand that the community uh, owns so far back beyond that. I'm just curious as to what that is. I don't have any idea. I know that there's something, my wife saw that there's something being planned for deeper into the preserve where it's going to have campground and walking no. trails. No, that's not no, going to happen. Nothing's happening. No. Okay, well, that's good. She saw the... There, 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 was some, there was some discussion about that and the way it's set up right now, it can't be used for anything. It doesn't mean it can't be in the future. Right. It came up with people into walking trails. There was a time when the... Uh, the village of Estero wanted us to, you know, transfer it to them and maybe do things with it. But right now, the way it sits, and the CD basically owns it, we maintain it, so 50-50 deal. Bill, I think what he's talking about, that, that that's the CDD, our portion. There's another portion of Edison yeah. Farms. Yeah, yeah. 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 more than 200 acres. Yeah. But that's what, the, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. yeah, they yes. can't get the Edison Farms really unless we do something with them. Right. Or if they want to run down the high lines, there's been talk about different things, but the village has no plans to do anything out there anyhow. Okay. Uh, it, it comes up every now and then. People are looking for things to do, sure. but uh, the cost for doing it is sort of prohibitive, and they're 
uh, to do anything out there. There are a bunch of state regulations for the maintenance and everything else. Even if we aren't using it, we have a state inspector that comes in and tells us that we got to do this or that for us. So that's one of the reasons the way it was set up is going to be preserved for the near future. I was just curious what that distance was from the fence to it's, whatever it is. It's a, it's a pretty good number of acres. Yeah, I think there's 200 and some acres out there. That is our, of ours. But I mean, our, of ours. Eight acres could, is both length and yeah, yeah, right. right. But how deep if, if I don't know. Out there. I don't know. It's, it's pretty it, far. It's pretty deep if uh, you look at a map of the county and you can see where our preserve ends. Yards, and then there, oh no, it's yeah. Yeah, and there's an, uh, I'm just curious. The, yeah. the place over here, not the place, the preserve has uh, their preserve area butts up to us. I think they did go into the agreement with the uh, the village because they were talking about mm -hmm. it. But that's just the way that stands. And it's out there to keep keep green and make drinking water for us. Okay. Uh, my wife saw today that there were some surveyors on Bellhaven. Um, so I didn't know if it had to do anything with maybe the road improvement that may be going on with the CDD or if it's just something private. I don't know if anybody knew about that. Okay. We don't have anything going on, do we? No. Okay. Um, and so the security at night, the roving security, I know that there was not happening for a while. I was curious, uh, is that? It might be back. It's back, but yeah. during that duration? The prob problem was like it was <coughs> happening nationwide. Didn't Nobody wants to work. Right. And uh, we talked with the company at the time that was happening, and they went out and got a bunch of new people that wanted to work for them. They paid for them to get certified, and then they went someplace else. So, but what they were doing, they were working 12-hour shifts, so we were covered. We're only maybe a week or so that we were out the night shift, but we wanted that one back as quick as we could get it. And we're back to that point now that we've got three rovers on the street. We've got Stanley, who's in charge, and we have Gene. Uh, up until 11, they have a new guy named O that's on from 11 to 7. Okay. And then we have and Danielle. And when they weren't there, they in charge us for them. Okay, that's good. Good. Um, a little while ago, there was an incident where kids being kids going around and doing the knocking on the doors and, you know, and then taking off. And um, <clears throat> I understand they got caught because uh, a sheriff came up to our door because my wife came up to the guard shack and, and reported them. And she had to go up there because when she called, she couldn't get directly in. It was one of those, who do you want to register? And could never get to a live person. So instead of calling 911, she didn't feel like it was that big of a deal to call 911. She just wanted to let the security know something was going on to be aware. So is there a way for someone to call for something like that without having to go through the recording and uh, instead of just driving up there? Um, not really, because the reason we went to that was the guard was doing more answering the phone than dealing with the cars lined up to, out to court the road. If people were using that instead of dwelling live to call their people in, and we looked at that over the years, and that's why it went the way it is. That most communities do it that way. It just you didn't almost definitely didn't have an operator set up there sometimes to do it. Uh, the best thing to do is leave a recording. They try to get to those recordings as quick as they can and see what's going on. Unfortunately, it's not like calling 911, but uh, I think we did take care of that problem when they found out. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there is, out. and there is a non-emergency police number that you can call uh, if, if, uh, and they they will respond. Yeah. Okay. I can give you that number if you want. It. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I can give with you, or maybe we could go in the newsletter. Maybe something like that? It's in the newsletter. Oh, is it? Okay, sorry. Yeah. My wife reads Yeah, it's on one of the column sides. Yeah. Guess I need to read it. Oh, uh, I know we had... <laughs> sorry. Well, it's always newsletter's fun. another story. Yeah. I, I know we, we had an incident where uh, some youngsters were uh, misbehaving and we called a non-emergency number and the police came and talked to them and we haven't seen them since. Yeah, good. Yeah, the uh, thing is... The police don't. <laughs> the there, there's a couple different sheriff's programs that deal with the juveniles, and uh, they they do take it seriously. And I, most of the parents understand if something happens, that something's going to happen if they don't do something about it. And uh, so 
Kids are going to be kids. They yeah. just do different things than we did when we were young. They got more things to do it with. I won't admit anything. You could be you could be Cape Carl with the mailboxes, the baseball mailboxes that went on the other day. Yep. Yeah. I guess this last one is maybe for Lloyd, um, since it has to do with the CDD. If you could, may, or maybe you guys know why they have most of their meetings um, during the working day, uh, when a good number of us residents work and can't attend. They, they have some at night. Some, but, but most the from what I saw the calendar. Is, those guys, their guys are working the days. That's not my problem, that's theirs. <laughs> oh, I know, but. <laughs> I agree. But it's also on YouTube. You can see their meetings on YouTube. I don't want to see my yeah, stuff. I just want to be there. And I don't, well, and it's I an option. Right, it's and, an I, option. and I can't. I can't watch them on YouTube if they're doing it live because I have to work. There's an option. That's, that's just an option. Is by the hold of Eileen uh, Huff. She's the president of the uh, CDD. And uh, see if you can work out. Yeah. They do have some meetings in the evening. Mm -hmm. About so, every third meeting, I believe it is. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how many it is now. Okay, so therefore, most of them are when mm -hmm. yeah. a lot of people have to work and can't attend. So it's, yeah. that comes across. Apparent, uh, it appears to be a way of doing things without having a lot of. Uh, no, that's, no not that's, not that's not the reason. I don't care what the reason is. That's the appearance that it gives. Well, you know. Scott, let me turn this around a little bit. You don't care about going on Zoom, you want to be there. We have our meetings at 6.30 in the evening. A lot of young folks can't make our meetings because they have families. That's why we have the Zoom. If people really want to know what's going on, whether here or CDD, I don't make every CDD meeting, but I go and I watch the Zoom, the, the, the meeting. So you can't make everyone happy. Actually, I, I know you don't care, but that's but, life. But getting, Actually, okay, one thing that... I'm just saying, get, countering back to that, if they can't be here because they have families, it's because they're also working, so they can't be. They well, can't we, go to we can, day we can agree to disagree. That's fine. That's but all but it needs to be made accessible. I, I, I'll be honest with person. you, I didn't like the phrase you used. Well, I don't care about them. I, I want to be there. I don't care about no, they're, I, they're, I sort of was offended by that remark. Well, their agenda and their time frame <laughs> is, is they volunteer for it. So well, they well, need no, to no, 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 no. They're, they're elected. Okay, okay. They volunteered to run and get elected. Who does? Right? CDD people. They get paid. Yeah. See, that's not paid. the only problem. Some of the people that come to those meetings are paid employees. And they're... <coughs> Contractually. Yeah, and I know that fellow that's the head of the uh, maintenance department that has to be there at every yeah. meeting. You wouldn't believe how many hours that man spends at this place to make sure it's running, not only for the golf course, but for this community, because he's in charge of the of the, uh, the landscape, the common area. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just to say that they don't care. I, I got a problem with that. I don't say that they don't care. I say they need to make themselves available for most of the residents that can be available should they well, want, want to attend. The only thing I can suggest is that, that, that the next one they have that you can attend, that you address them and, and, and share your, your, your uh, um, concerns, and, and maybe there's something they can work out. Maybe there isn't. I mean, that's. You can the, reach out on their website. They have. I, I have, or if that's some concerns. That's like we can reach out to you people. Exactly. You can go on the website, they have a general email address, you can address your concerns. Anything I've ever written about, they've gotten back to me. So you can do that as well. Yeah. I know it's two separate entities, and this yeah, isn't right. directed towards you guys at all. No, I understand. You know, I'm just trying to find out but that's, those that have been here longer than I have. That's what I would suggest. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Moving along, uh, we have the minutes of the last meeting, and I have some corrections for it. Okay, Elizabeth. <laughs> I thought you were going to email those to me. Pardon? I thought we were going to email those instead yeah, of talking about didn't it. didn't have time today. I was busy. Mm -hmm. Well, you can just get I can them to you tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, Bill, uh, I forgot to sign up when I came in. Uh, 
Um, but I had a couple of questions. Are you done with the Go ahead. No, we're still ahead. We'll go, go back for you. Come right ahead. Okay. There's no problem. Just asking yeah. works. All right. Thank you. Uh, my name is George Popovich. I live on Stratton Loop. I've been here since 2009. Um, two short topics. One is I have like five cypress trees in my backyard. And my pool is like 15 feet, not yards, feet from the water. So I got these elbows, knees, whatever you call them, coming up throughout my backyard. And I just noticed last week, I got one of these elbows coming up like this far from my uh, pool wall. And the wall's only this tall. So is anybody familiar with these tr the roots of these trees? Could it crack concrete? Roots can do almost anything. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know that. Uh, Okay, the 15 feet you got there basically is the easement between your property line and, and the lake, which is required by the county. Uh, your best results for that is, first of all, those roots are in the, on the CDD property. Not, not front brushing off, but uh, if you talk to them, maybe they can get the superintendent to have some knowledge. Go ahead, Lloyd. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's somebody like on uh, three houses that down from us. Pardon? It's the property owners. It, we, when I was on the board, we've been through this before on spread. There's a house like three houses down. Uh, I'm on Lake Number Seven, and uh, he had, I believe, two or three trees cut down that he had to get approval from. At that time, it was Lake County. There was no sterile village. Um, so I noticed on the Sterile Village website that there is, you could go on and there's an application you fill out to have trees cut down. Because I, I, I believe, I don't know, but I believe if you cut the tree down, the roots are probably going to stop growing, I would think. Yeah, but keep in mind that that, that, is, that that is a CDD owned tree. You cannot cut it down without their permission. Yeah. Uh, so the village doesn't have anything to do with it? The village deal? needs a permit, but the CDD authorizes yeah. or not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, so you do the village permit, but you also need one from us or the CDD, depending on where it's at. When this was built, they were required to put so many of those trees in, yeah. just like the old trees. Yeah. And we've had to have permit permits to cut them out on some of those ponds. In fact, uh, it's the pond over here behind Wayne because they were uh, tearing up some drain lines. We had to get a permit to do that. I don't think we get permits anymore for um, the homeowners for us to have them. Uh, yes, if trees. you read the village's list village of permits, they came out with a list. Yeah, yeah there are a lot of your well, lists. The list that you have to do everything yep. now has yeah. to yeah. Well, yeah. You get, But you got to check with Lee County, too, as, as far as taking down those cypress. Yeah. Because we had to go through but, that. Uh, but uh, on the well, knees, I know there's the knees everything is top. online for yeah. the village yeah. for right. for uh, residents to have trees cut down. Yeah. And about three or four years ago, three three houses down, they had some cut down. Uh, and they're nowhere they have a lot more land than, than I do between the lake and their pool structure. So I want to tell you some people have gone in and they cut them roots that are headed for the house, and they will die once it's cut. What should the tree die? You don't or? have to take no. the tree down. You have somebody come in and cut the root. Uh, there, yeah, there's so many roots throughout the yard without with all these big, you know, yeah, elbows, yeah. knees yeah. sticking up. And my understanding is that when this was built around Lake Number Seven, all those cypress trees were supposed to go along the uh, street side. What is this? Stony Brook Boulevard. Boulevard. Yeah, Stony Brook Boulevard. But they put them instead where the houses are. And that was that was. I don't know, I don't know if that's true or not, but but I know the knees themselves you can you can you can cut down at the ground level. You know, take a chainsaw. You know, rent a chainsaw, have something to do it. Yeah, uh, I'm worried about did. what's under the ground. Though. But but like White says, you can you can kind of take out a, a tape measure and go out 15 feet or, or 14 feet, you know, and, and, and mark it, and then then uh, cut those roots, you know, that are in, you know aiming towards your, your pool, and it won't kill the tree. 
it'll, but it will kill those roots, obviously. And we've done that behind uh, uh, bricks of, or uh, burr rich and that, and they were going over towards the, the wall over there. Yeah. They cut those out, they cut the roots out. Like I say, like he says, it doesn't kill the tree. Well, uh, I'm gonna go through the village and fill out their paperwork um, because, uh, I mean, it, do I, I guess what I'm asking is, should I get somebody from CDD to inspect the property and give me advice? Yeah, I have anybody that can actually do that. Your best bet is go to the city and see what they tell you, what you have to do, and then if you have questions after that, refer back to us. Uh, come to the office and see Tammy, and we'll find somebody yeah. if we have to get the answer. And I'll say one thing, they are responsive, the village. So yeah. in a couple of days, you will have an answer. That, that's your best bet. You cover all the bases and. Well, I'm starting to see some cracks as well in yeah. the wall. Oh, so, you're going to get cracks. I mean, if I have a real full problem, yeah. somebody else is going to have a problem. Yeah, I understand that. But so I would get, get everything you can from the village and lay out your plan. And so okay. it comes up that we we are responsible for the village tells you to let us know, and we'll Those see. Those trees were the worst things to put in. Yeah. 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 Uh, the other thing I just wanted to bring. First of all, I want to thank you guys, the board and the staff, for keeping this place looking good. Similar along the comments of what Lloyd said. Keeping this place looking good and uh, working good. So you guys do a great job. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I did want to make a comment uh, on, uh, or for my own edification, regarding HOAs. Because I know next year they're going up to $450 uh, a quarter. and. Uh, that's a 36% increase in four years. 2018, it was $330. So now it's, it's, gonna, it's going to 450. Um, I guess my question is regarding other communities. Do, does the board have any information from Alliant, for instance, on what the percent increases from other communities are? Yes. We do get that when we do our budgeting. The thing you have to realize our community is one of the older ones along the right. corridor here. We're, we're 20 years old, and we're playing catch up on doing the maintenance. Try over the years with keeping the dues down, things fail to do. We've got some big ticket items that have come up for age uh, that have to be done, and unfortunately, our dues go up. And we we try to keep the best we can, but you want to keep this where your house values are up, and we still have probably one of the better mm -hmm. quarterly dues. We do. We do. Last time I was on the board, we used to go around and look at the other communities. Uh -huh. And we are still in Southwest Florida, the lowest quarterly dues. Our dues are um, by the quarter. These other places that are coming in, they're four hundred dollars or better a month. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do know that these other places also include lawn cutting, hedge trimming, tree trimming, some of them. And I mean, for me, that that's another four hundred dollars a quarter. So if that was included in our dues, we'd probably be looking at eight hundred and fifty dollars a quarter. Well, I have a feeling a lot of those that you're talking about are going to increase because most communities are going to be hit with at least a 30% increase in insurance and a lot of that has to do with the replacement cost to do a building. Yep. Everybody's going to get that. So I think you're going to find their homeowner's fees are going to be skyrocketing. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, and, and everything, everything's not up. Labor, no, I full maintenance. I mean, I mean, if you went through, if you sat through our budget time. meetings, uh, you well, your landscaping, your landscaping. pools, all your vendors are up a minimum of four percent, all of them. Yeah. And in the past, we've never had that. So, correct me if I'm wrong. When we do the budget, we're we're forecasting what we expect these expenses to be. Right. So right. I mean, it's. Fortunately, that's what it is, and everybody on everybody on this board pays pays the same thing too. As those costs increase, I would hope we're also scouring the the budget to where we can bring things absolutely. down as well. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. 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 To help oh, absolutely. Yeah. We would love some here to drop it. Man, maybe we'll get to that point. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, getting back to the minutes. If we go to page one. And drop down to the number of residents were at the last meeting. It says eight. 
were that's actually there were 32 people here, which was a nice crowd. It was for the budget meeting. On uh, page three, uh, <clears throat> under the activities, the second to last one, the pickleball tournament added was for the adults, not kids. And in the motion, in the middle, uh, second line, uh, the gentleman doing the pickleball training's last name is spelled S-H-A-N-D, not Sands. And then under communication committee report, in the first line, members should be members. And that's it. Anybody Mr. else? Is that all right? <laughs> must be the must be the weather. We're all happy or not. the season. If if there, if, there are, if there aren't any other corrections, I'll entertain a motion to accept. I move that we uh, uh, accept the minutes as as amended. I'll second it. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed, no. left hand. Carried. Okay. Next is, uh, of course, the officers. Well, Lloyd, you took my thunder tonight. If, if you got the newsletter yet, which is getting later every month, is sort of something uh, we were discussing today. But I did mention in the newsletter our volunteers and stuff. I didn't want to list names in there because you'll miss somebody, somebody's feelings get hurt. Besides the people that Lloyd mentioned, I mean, those are the dynamos. Uh, Jamie works with them at the, all the time and stuff. But uh, we have committees that work in here too, which I mentioned in the newsletter, which is Architecture Review Committee. Uh, those, those guys are out there at least once a week doing what they're supposed to do, checking on people's requests and answering questions and doing it. And we have our compliance committee that meets and listens to uh, the people who receive tickets to try and appease them and keep things going. And they don't get paid like we don't get paid, but they sure put a lot of time in it. I, I think it reflects well on our community with the way everybody works and we keep things going. And not only just those volunteers, but something goes on here. We have people all that live here come and do it. They're, they're, we'd like to see more young people involved with what's going on, but they work. But people on, at the retirement age are looking for things to do and they get involved and we do it. Uh, you know, I was, when Debbie Lane was mentioned at the end, she does a lot of the stuff with adults. I don't think she was here today and she was talking to me and she had a laundry list and I asked her, what you do all summer? Just come up with things? And she's come up with about eight more since then. Uh, Stephanie Crockett, who we uh, were talking about, she uh, works on some of the things uh, that she likes doing is for the kids, like lunch with Santa Claus or brunch with Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, Trunk or Treat, and uh, Jewel Farber was mentioned, and she's married herself to our bingo, and that's going fantastic. She's got the book club, and uh, all those, a lot of those gift cards that were yeah, yes, oh, yeah, yes. She strong arms more people and it works out well. Uh, Nancy Austin, she's just a wealth of information and works with us. So, you know, you try and single out the people, it's not a way to do it, but, you know, this is the time of year that, you know, Thanksgiving's next week, and we think about everything that goes on in here. And like I said in the newsletter, if you see these people someplace, a little pat on the head and thank them, they really like it. Uh, and this board here, I can't stand up for them, you know. The only way this place is going to work is we all do our parts and up here at the board, we just don't show up for the meetings. Uh, Tammy and Nicole, they got a, a workload going on in the office and the committee's doing their stuff. It just helps it go along smoothly, you know. You look at, we've got a staff of three people. We have Alex that keeps the outside stuff going, then we have Nicole and Tammy in the office. Uh, Bill and Terry's got seven people working there. But we do uh, have a, but Candy comes in eight hours a week and she does a lot of our correspondence work. But we try, and I'm talking about money, we try and get things done with what we can do here. And I think we're doing a hell of a job. And uh, as I said before, I thank everybody for it. And it's a pleasure working with them. And with that, we'll go to Tom and his treasurer's report. Uh, the treasurer's report, unfortunately, the financials were not done. I know the bookkeeper is still kind of working on that, so I don't have anything 
to report this. We still have money, right? Yes, we still okay. have money. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's what counts. Yes, we're yeah. still paying the bills. We're still solvent. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anything else? Uh, well, you want me to talk about the well, I'll get back to your committee. Okay, All then right. no. I don't have anything. All right, and that brings us to, well, might as well, the committee report. Uh, the facilities planning committee, uh, we met the other day to look at the second draft that the architect provided. We're still kind of, we're trying to button that up and the plan is at the next board meeting to have the architect here to go and present the uh, rendering just that based upon the focus groups and all the things just that people said just that they liked and they did not like and we'll kind of go and show folks what it looks like and then we'll take the next steps or we will discuss the next steps I should say. Okay. What is what is the uh, date of the next meeting? I know we changed 14th, it. Tuesday, December 14th. December 14th. Okay. Thank you. So that would be mentioned at the end of the meeting, but the next meeting is the second Tuesday in December because of the holidays. So it will be the 14th. Okay, Rich? Yes. Uh, just sure. The communications committee, uh, we met, myself and Terry, Nancy Austin and uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't there. No, uh, but what's Saint Saint Saint? Oh, Danny Saint Danny 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 uh, We met. Yeah. We're working on pretty much shoring up survey questions for the proposed changeover if it's decided to change over from our cable contract when it expires, which will be in April of 2023, but it's not too soon to begin looking at things. So we're pretty much ironed out uh, survey questions. Alliance will we'll do that via uh, the survey monkey through Alliance. And we're hoping to reach out to the unofficial social media sites in the community. Uh, Port Rush Run has a social media site. Night Run has a social media site.